euphoric, all the second they become very sad. Right? So what all that you can now you know see in you yourself. But see what is happening is the whole of our education is focusing on the others. You know, we are trying to set others right. We are trying to set these plants and the trees and the animals, you know, improve their breed. But not try to improve our consciousness. And we are not even aware of it. So you are trying to, you know, you are busy manipulating other people. You are busy manipulating other things, you know, the rest of nature. But the one who is busy manipulating everyone, we are not aware of it. of your own self. If you have a good feeling, then you always think other people are so good. And then if you have a, a suspicion, you know, if you have a, uh, you have a, I mean, if you start stealing and then you believe in stealing and uh, all these things, then when you see other people going in your house, you'll also feel that, oh, he is going inside to him, steal, you know, something like that. So, the reflection on the other is actually begins from yourself. So the, I think uh, the one word that uh, the Ganesh Ji mentioned is keeping aware of yourself every second. That I think is a key to me, I, I think this is a key to have a heart in life. Because you then begin to be aware of the, the question asked by uh, one gentleman is that one morning you wake up and the dull, not happy, you know. I think these answers cannot be found by all of us. It has to be found by yourself because you know where your mind is going and how it Their lack of confidence. And I think that what 
difficult about that is it's easier for us to talk to somebody about their lack of confidence from a place of anger or irritation because then we're blaming them. And the difficulty is that when we try to do it from a loving place, that, that requires that we expose our own vulnerability. It requires that we express how we were hurt by somebody else's lack of confidence. And I think that's why we don't do it. It is easier to say, you did this and now I'm angry. Rather than to say, you did this and that hurt me. And that's why we need to talk about it. Yeah, certainly. In fact, that over evaluation that we have done of ourselves, thinking that I am okay. Right? And therefore, if somebody makes a mistake and I get angry, right? I think this is, this is because of the other. If you look at this, you will realize that if I got angry, right, it is because of myself. Right. The other person was lacking competence, so he created some problem. That is very true. So there is problem with the other. But then I got angry, this is problem with me. Right. But you don't you know, uh, kind of dare to do it because then it will be a proper evaluation of your own self. And that over evaluation which we have, you have already done will be put to question. So that is true. But then ultimately we have to do it because all this over evaluation, which is called ego, right, are they making our life happy or unhappy? Unhappy. So why continue with that unhappiness? In fact, I keep telling this, you know, this ego and depression is just the reflection of lack of understanding. And if you are getting into ego, very soon you are going to get into depression. Right? Because you will start with over-evaluation and you will not be able to sustain that over-evaluation. Right? Then you will be hurt about it. Then you will go into depression. Go into under you know, evaluation. And then you will keep on fluctuating. So if you draw the diagram of the state of mind of the people, it looks like this. Over evaluation leading to ego. Under evaluation leading to depression. Right evaluation leading to self confidence. <coughs> so, over evaluation is here, under evaluation is here, right evaluation is here. If you look at your state of being, Right? It goes like this. Over evaluation is started, then you are not able to maintain that, so you get into under evaluation. Right? You start with saying, I can do anything. Then you find that many things you cannot do. <laughs> right? So you start feeling that I cannot do anything. Right? That is under evaluation. That is the depression. Right? <laughs> then, after some time, you cannot continue with this. Then you again you start over evaluating yourself. That no, no, this time I will try and make sure that I do anything. You know. And that's how you, it happens. Right? What is desirable is this. And this is what we are talking about. Right? We are neither talking about excitement in terms of going very high or in terms of going very low. We are talking about the normal condition, right? How a human being 
can live a normal life. What we are doing today is abnormal life. That up is also abnormal, this down is also abnormal. Right? And that is what is we are. We are working for. So most of the time you try to create excitement. Right? <coughs> On the higher side, upper side, sometimes you are able to do it. And most of the time you are still in you know, end up with this down. But you are not working for the right evaluation, for the self-confidence. Only when you have the right evaluation of the self, you understand the real self, you become normal. When you understand the real self, then you have the self-confidence. Right? So you are in harmony with him, and then you work for harmony with everyone else. That is the outcome of the real self. That is the indicator of being in a state of happiness. So certainly it will sound very tough, hard, you know, when you look at this. Because yesterday I posed this question and I can now ask back, how many you have trust on intention unconditionally, continuously? Right? It is difficult to find one. And that is your state of being. Right? It is difficult to find one. Right? So, this is... Uh, so on the one hand, it is difficult for you to find even one person, right? You have trust on intention unconditional, continuous, right? On the other hand, if you have the right understanding, you will have trust on intention of everybody. When I am making the program with him, I will evaluate my competence and I will evaluate the competence of the other. And I will make the program on the basis of the competence of the two. Right? In the process, I will try to improve my competence. I will try to improve the competence of the other. So while making the program, I will evaluate my competence and competence of the other. But as far as the intention part is concerned, I will have trust on intention of everybody. Mm -hmm. So, I have this, you know, clarity that everybody sitting here wants to understand what is right. They want to do what is right. And they have the capacity to understand what is right. With that trust on intention, I am sharing all this with you. But then, you may or may not have the competence. I took that example that I know English, you also know English. Right? Therefore, I am sharing it in English. Right? If I start sharing in Hindi, okay, it will not work because you do not have the competence of you know, understanding this language Hindi. On the other hand, if you want me to share in Bhutanese, right, I do not have that competence. But the intention is always there. 
to understand. And if I have the understanding to share. Right? So that trust on intention is always there. But the competence has to be evaluated right? when this sharing has to take place. Similarly, as I mentioned, that every five minutes you take off, right? Okay. That does not mean that you don't want to understand. You want to understand, but that is your competence level, right? You are not aware of yourself, so you don't know what is happening. So every two minutes, every five minutes, you take off. If I evaluated this competence of yours, then I cannot complain about it. What I can do is, I can work out my program in a manner that despite the fact that you will take off every five minutes, ten minutes, right, and you may come back even after three days, right, I have designed this program in a manner that despite the fact that you keep taking off physically or mentally, right, it should still be conveyed to you. So I will repeat ten times, hundred times, even thousand times, depending upon how important that you know concept is. So if you are here, okay, it is very very difficult for you, right, not to get into it. The only way is to run away from here. If you are run away from here, it is fine. But if you are here, right. The first day or the second day or the third day or the fourth day, you will be in it. Because I take it as my responsibility to make sure, you know, on the basis of my competence and your competence, that this message is conveyed to you. This process of self-exploration is starting. So I will try to improve my competence. I will try to improve your competence. Right? And then finally make sure that it works. So I remember when we were doing this workshop first time in Hyderabad, it was with the students, you know, of Andhra Pradesh. So we thought that they know, they don't know Hindi, but they know English. So we started conducting the workshop. And on the fifth day, I realized that they neither know Hindi nor English. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the status. Now what to do? So they know tell you and I don't know tell you. <laughs> yeah, so it is not very difficult. Now, if you rightly evaluate the competence, you can come up with some solution. Right? So when we found that they neither know Hindi nor English, then we requested one faculty member from people IT who knew Telugu, who is from Hyderabad, right? He knows Hindi, he knows English, right? All this. So we asked him, can you translate this, you know, sum up what we are saying in English in, in Telugu in 15 20 minutes after the session, you know? He said, yes, I'll do it. So we are conducting this session for one and a half an hour, then he was, was translating it in 15 to 20 minutes in Telugu. And that's how we could convey that. And the one important outcome of that has been that he is now taking workshop in Telugu right, of the people in Andhra Pradesh. So if this clarity is there, you know, this trust and intention is there, then we try to improve upon the competence our own competence and competence of the other. But yes, certainly, to begin with, it sounds pretty difficult. Are I still do not feel comfortable with this question. <laughs> how many persons you have, how many persons you have trust on intention, unconditionally and consciously? I still feel very uncomfortable with this question. Because if a person says that you jump from this roof of the house, how can I drop on this? It is difficult, it is difficult. So rather than, uh, I mean, if we want to answer this from a different perspective, uh, point of view, 
I would uh, question, uh, I would answer not in this way, but I would answer that first I think one has to trust within self. You have to recognize the self. Then only it will be uh, the question then comes for the trust on the others. But uh, no matter how many times I asked this question last night and this morning to myself, it is very difficult for me. I don't know, this is something uh, beyond my imagination, uh, beyond uh, my uh, understanding. <coughs> well, there was a case on this example, I could bring the Kilopa and Naropa, they were Bengalis from India, and they were both the teacher and student, and then the teacher was Kilopa, and then Naropa was his student, and all the time, Naropa, Tiropa used to torture the Naropa, make him jump from the rock, uh, you know, and sometimes get beating, severe beatings from the public. Then finally he got enlightened. So the key was, I think, what you mentioned here, I think the key was to get him enlightened. These days, to get such a guru and then a jela, so difficult. I don't know. Even if I thought of my mother, can I trust my mother and uh, on intention, unconditionally on my mother? Yes, and my father. I don't know about others. Please help me to understand this. <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we, when we are asking one A to A, we are asking about this just on oneself. One A and two A is asking question about oneself. And I am saying if one A and two A is true, then three A and four A is the reflection. In that sense, I can see my natural acceptance and also the natural acceptance of the other. But again, I am saying when it comes to making the program with the other person, whether my mother or father or you know, husband or wife or children, I have to evaluate my competence and I have to evaluate the competence of the other. He might be lacking the competence, though the intention is there. So the problem is not with the intention, the problem is with the competence. But this makes all the difference. Okay. How it makes all the difference is what we will take up and explain with some examples. That as long as you have trust on intention, right? This lack of competence on the part of the other is not hurting you. Right? It is not causing you unhappiness. Only when you start doubting the intention of the other on the basis of his you know, lack of competence, then you feel hurt. Only when you start doubting the intention, right, on the basis of his lack of competence, then the other person starts feeling hurt or you feel start feeling hurt about it. Similarly, when you are evaluating the competence of the other, okay, he is not hurt about it. Right? When you convey this doubt on the intention of the other, that is what is hurting to the other. Right? And that difference you can see. Last three days, we have been talking about so many things. Right? And now all that is indicating towards your lack of competence.
but it is not hurting for you. Because I have that trust and intention. Eh? I am talking to you with that trust and intention as the base. Right? And we are talking about the evaluation of the competence. So as I said, when I said, you know, ask yourself whether you are living in animal consciousness, human consciousness, right? All this, if I had concluded it for you, you will get trouble. Right? I have left it for you to evaluate and you are making this evaluation yourself, coming to the same conclusion. Right? There this trust on intention is there, but the evaluation of competence is taking place. So you are all able to look into yourself, you know, you know, evaluate yourself, understand what is your state of being, right? And you find that it is not all that worth. But yet you are not reacting to it. You are not feeling hurt about it. You can say, you know, in front of everybody that I am not able to find even one person on whom I have trust on intention unconditionally, continuously. I got one answer. I got one answer. I think I got one answer on this question just now. Uh, I would change the question. <laughs> That's how. <laughs> Not how many persons you have a trust or, or trust on intention, unconditionally and continuously. But yes, one can trust on the person's uh, uh, intention and his action, action base and behavior base. I can trust uh, on the uh, person's behavior or action, not on the person himself. Like, for example, we can, we cannot trust on Jesus or Buddha or, you know, but we trust on his action, his intention, because the actions are based on intentions. So I would rather twist this question to suit my, to suit to myself, <laughs> by saying that uh, not on person, because there is a difference, big difference I find between a person and an action. We always respect the person because of his action, because of his behavior, because of his intention, not as a person himself, just because he has a beautiful face or a big nose or a long face. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference like, if we really look into an actor and an action. We should always focus on the action, not on the actor. Because the moment we go on the actor, because that uh, so, this is my answer. <laughs> you see, when you are evaluating the behavior or the action of a person, you are essentially evaluating the competence. Right? And there is, you know, there is going to be a lot of question marks there anyway. But that is not what is natural acceptance is. And that's what I mentioned yesterday. When you make a mistake, you say a mistake has taken place. Why? Because you know that you didn't want to commit a mistake. Your intention is, your natural acceptance is to do what is right. But because of the lack of competence, the mistake happened. But when somebody else commits a mistake, you don't say that the mistake has happened. You say that he has committed a mistake. He made a mistake. What does it mean? He made a mistake because of the lack of competence. But on the basis of this, you start making a judgment that he wanted to commit a mistake. And intention and uh, competence are both actions. No. This is the you know, outcome of this is the behavior and your work. Right? That is, has to do with your competence. That has to do with this part. Right? The natural acceptance has to do with this part. Right? So that part is intact in all of us. This part may be corrupted due to preconditioning, due to sensation. So 
this natural acceptance or what we will now finally put it as realization and understanding that part is uncorrupted this part may be on the basis of this or may be on the basis of this and this if it is on the basis of this or this it is likely to get corrupted and because